Hey, I decided to come on live and just kind of update you on a few things. I've had a lot of messages asking how I did with the eye surgery and um, well, we'll start with the bloody gory part. This is how it looks, ah, but I can see, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Dr. Lowry King, the retina doctor, he did wonderful. I am so, so happy that I got a second opinion on that because the first retina doctor was an idiot. So I am speaking my mind about that. Um, Dr. King told me make sure to share that with other people who had the same issue that I did. I was in stage four with that um, floater. <laughs> Uh, which he said was like a woolly worm caterpillar. It was huge when he pulled it out, um, cleaned up that entire thing, learned a lot about it. Um, it it's a genetic thing for me. Um, but not that I know anybody else in my family that has it, but he said that what it is is you're genetically predisposed to have that issue where the, the, uh, um, now give me the, the, the stuff pulls away from the retina. Not a retina tear, but it does pull away from the retina. And there's certain stages of it. Everybody gets floaters in their eyes, but you know, one or two small floaters, it's just a normal part of life. But there are some people who are predisposed to large chunks falling off as things happen, especially if you've ever had nearsightedness. Um, he said that increases the chances by 50%. And then, because two years ago, I ended up having cataract surgery early. Don't know what that reason was for that either. It just happened to happen. Um, he said that kind of like, it, it didn't cause it at all. It was going to happen eventually. But he said after the cataract surgery, it, uh, it made what was normal and natural for to happen to me because of my predisposition towards it happen faster and just kind of jarred it. Um, so I had to have the cataract surgery because I was blind from that. <laughs> from that. But anyway, the <clears throat> after having this surgery where they actually, it, he went in, I guess they put a bubble, they remove all of that back there and then they put this like bubble in your eye and then they fill it with saline. Um, they say they put you in that twilight stage but they they put me out. I was out. Even though it was like for less than 15 minutes, I was out. Probably the best sleep ever. <laughs> and it was an easy recovery. The only thing I will say is that when he removed my patch the next day, by that point I was pretty sore, which I didn't expect that. I, I, I don't know what exactly I expected except because I had had the cataract surgery and when they removed anything it was like I could miraculously see which I had never done my entire life I'd always had to wear glasses um, for a distance I couldn't see I was the kid in the back of the classroom because they alphabetized us with my name being Webb they put me in the back of the classroom and I would sit there like this with my eyes any of you who were in school with me when I was a little kid you might even remember that <laughs> and then I finally got glasses uh, between third and fourth grade and um, and then I could see. But anyway, so whenever I got my cataract surgery, I could miraculously see immediately afterwards. This time, I had this surgery, he removes the patch. I'm like, oh yeah, it's com uncomfortable. You know, I could feel the pressure because it was a different surgery. And I couldn't see. I was a little freaked out. I was maintaining my composure but I wanted to cry because it was green. It was the same color as this shirt right here. <laughs> In fact, it was kind of like looking through it, you know? It, it was very green and almost like looking at ocean water rippling. That's what I saw. And it stayed that way for several days after. Um, it made me, it gave me motion sickness. I was very uncomfortable and I was like, when am I going to get my sight back? I got work to do. I was in the middle of doing that mural. I was just like, I, I had, I had portraits to do. I had lots of stuff to do. 
<laughs> and now I'm green, you know, it's like, and then the bloody spot showed up and I'm like, Brr. and there's a slight black eye underneath, but anyway, I called over the weekend cause I was worried about that. Plus I had this like funny taste in my mouth, but that was from the medications. And then I ended up with some kind of like sinus infection or something on top of it. It had nothing to do with the eyes. It was pure coincidence. Um, but anyway, I was like, I don't feel good. And I gotta go back and finish the mural. And I couldn't bend over and I was supposed to not lift things. And you know, you got to worry about the pressure and I'm coughing because of the sinus thing. So like, I'm worried it might be gonna do damage to my eye. So it was a very stressful last week <laughs> for me, but it's over and I can breathe. And so now I'm making you a short little update so that you can know what's going on um, if any of you have vision problems because of what like what I had I swear dr. Lowry King in Charleston South Carolina is the doctor to go to he is amazing it's so wonderful he told me he says you had a real problem he says it, you couldn't see he says it, it was ridiculous for anybody to think that you could go around your life with that thing in front of my vision. And what's more, for the kind of career that I have, <laughs> to not be able to see is very limiting. So enough about that. I am better and the red spot will eventually turn orange and then yellow and it's going to change colors and it's going to be weird looking for a little while. Um, but I don't care. I, honestly, I don't care because I can see perfectly. I am so happy. So details and speed and work. Which brings me to the next subject. I'm going to update you on some of the things that's going on. Um, in addition to the recovery last week, I also finished the school mural. Yay! <laughs> I am so relieved that I finally finished that school mural. Um, there was some delays in just getting it started. I had no intention of working on it in the month of September. I should have been done by now. There was some things that was because of me uh, and some things that was because of the school and it's just the way business is. Um, the surface it, it was a lot more difficult than I had ever worked on and I've worked on brick. So that concrete surface was a real booger. It turns out, found out later, there's many layers of paint that had been on that, but then I purchased primer and had their custodial uh, guy paint the primer on the wall, the entire wall. Um, and it, But it turned out that that originally had been painted in oils. So if anybody knows anything about that, paint oil and you paint latex over oil. It had many, many layers of latex over oil. And a, another mural had been painted on top of it before I painted on top of it. So anyway, the surface was really weird. And it was like painting that mural three times over. Normally, I give extra time for how long I think it's going to take. That one really Plus I couldn't see, <laughs> so that didn't help either. <laughs> but the school was a little late, not the school, the school district was a little late on the paperwork and everything, getting everything started, even though we had approval a couple weeks before school started. Um, they were just a little delayed. I don't know who, what the issue was because everything had been approved. It was just a matter of signing contracts and getting the deposit to me. and. Of course I have to purchase materials and that takes another day and anyway so all that happened and it's over it's beautiful and I will be making a video I have not posted yet what the entire thing looked like um, I will be posting it though because I'm gonna do a complete video with start to finish so you'll be able to see that and I will be posting it. She, the principal who hired me wants to have a big reveal at the school so I had originally tagged her or tag the school 
and she removed the tag. She says, I don't want anybody seeing it complete until, <laughs> until we have this big reveal. So I don't know when they're doing the big reveal. I don't think I'm part of that. She didn't say anything about it, but that's okay. I am like pushed and crunched for time right now. So um, anyway, but that's the mural. Uh, and I hopefully have a few mur few, hmm, few more, not few mur, few more murals coming up <laughs> to do. Um, so I'm excited about that because I do enjoy murals. They're a little hard on my body, but they really are something I have treasured. I've been doing them for over 30 years and I love doing murals. Anyway, uh, let me look at my notes here. Let's see, I had some some things to talk about. Oh, um, so what's my schedule for this week? Oh, no, one more thing. I'm all over the place. Okay, the other thing I did last week, yes, I crammed another thing into last week, is I had two portraits to deliver. Also was able to make videos of them receiving it. Thankfully, they are wonderful clients. Um, one of them is a return client. She's extra special to me. Um, we met years ago uh, for our love for bees, and she admired my art, and she's been a collector, and I did her dog portrait. And so I gave that to her and videoed that. So I will be editing and doing all that stuff and posting that too, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, I also had a new client who I did uh, a dog portrait for, which I did post a picture of that dog portrait before I gave it to her, but she allowed me to videotape her receiving that. It's being given as a gift to her daughter uh, this week. And she said she's also gonna videotape her response. So she's gonna send that to me. So if I can um, do it, you know, the technical stuff, I'm going to merge the two uh, videos together, you know, her, response and then her daughter's response when she opens it so special gift I love doing I love doing the the receiving videos those are really really cool um, and speaking of videos I am revamping my YouTube channel you know <laughs> this is completely unrelated for for those of you who collect my art or you're just interested in art uh, you know you can't do it but you admire it and you're collectors and appreciators of art we love you, all of us artists. But I have a lot of art connections with other artists and I have people who reach out to me who are struggling artists trying to figure out the business of art. And since I've been doing it for over 30 years, um, you know, a lot of people will ask me strategies, advice, tips, things like that. And I thought, you know what? There's not enough information out there. There's a lot of artists that have channels and they show you how to draw, they teach classes on how to draw and I thought, I think I'm just going to revamp my uh, YouTube channel to talk about the business of art, um, not to learn how to be an artist, because this is not for those who are looking for sharpening their skills as far as their artistic ability. These are people for people who are already confident in their artistic skills or other people who are in some kind of creative business who want to learn to market and be in the art world and what it takes to get your name out there and it, the things that I've learned. Um, they're strictly my opinion, uh, although I will be interviewing quite a few experienced ones who know what they're talking about um, and not somebody who's just starting their journey or you know, is, is just about you know, gaining followers, but those who are serious artists who want to know I need to know the business of art so that I can do this too. Because honestly, being being an artist, you could do it for a hobby. I, and there's a lot of naturally talented people out there who they're not interested in selling their work or anything like that. Or they might enjoy being in a gallery, but as far as, uh, you know, I, it's not that big of a deal to me if I don't sell anything. But there are those of us who are out there that we really want to sell our artwork. We really want to eat and pay our bills from the art that we produce. Instead of working for somebody else or something like that, we would rather, rather be entrepreneurs. And so I've failed in many ways, but from that I've learned. 
Um, and so I want to share more of that information on my YouTube channel. I just felt like it, it would be a good platform for that um, because I enjoy helping other artists. It, and I, I believe truly that the art community can be a really uh, a wonderful wealth of knowledge um, for those just starting out or even those who've been doing it for years and they're just like, hey, I need some new tips or things are changing and I really need to know how to do this. Um, and if you are a successful artist or you've learned some things that you wanna share as well, please let me know. In fact, I would love it if you commented and um, or sent me a message and say, hey, I would love to see more information about this or I have some information I'd love to share um, because I'm going to be doing interviews. Uh, to me, that's going to be a, a pivotal thing is to do interviews. So it's not just my opinion because what works for me may not work for somebody else or what worked for somebody else may not work for me. And so you can kind of get a good idea. Anyway, that's just a, a side thing um, that I'm doing because I need more side things to do. Yeah, because I'm not busy. <laughs> No, it's just, it's part of it to me. If you want to be a successful artist, you need to help other artists too and support each other um, because it, it, it can be a tough, a tough road. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. And if it doesn't have to take somebody else as long as it took me, um, I would love to help you. Anyway, so what's on my schedule for this week? Uh, notes, notes, notes. Oh, shipping and packaging or packaging and shipping. I have a lot of stuff to ship and I apologize to those who have been waiting. Uh, I, I make sure to hit the deadline for most things, but I've got some things to ship out that there was not a real deadline for and because things have just been so crazy, I have not gotten things out. I keep saying, I'm sending it, I'm sending it, I'm sending it, and then, I'm sorry. I'm a slacker. I'm trying not to be. Anyway, that's happening this week. Yay! I'm finally shipping out some stuff. So if you've been waiting, you're getting it this week, I promise. <laughs> I shouldn't say promise because, you know, a hurricane could happen. And we know what that does in the low country, coastal area. We know what, what can happen with that. All right. I also have three portraits to complete. Now, my goal is to complete them this week, but I actually have a, maybe two weeks to complete them. But that's what I'm really focused on is getting those portraits out of the way uh, and get, getting them shipped off um, because they are ones that need to be shipped off. And, uh, oh, um, I'm also working on my earrings. Uh, as many of you know that I've been painting those butterfly earrings for a long time. I'm not wearing them right now. I'm just doing something simple um, but uh, I have a market for them um, kind of working out a little deal so I'll let you know once that kind of takes place but anyway I am putting together uh, a, a bunch of the earrings um, for that and yeah just remember I gotta make some more for a, an event coming up towards the end of the year too anyway I just I should write that down. Well, now I got it on video. So I don't have to write it down. You remember for me, please remind me <laughs> that I got to make more earrings for the end of the year because there's an event. Um, another exciting thing, I was on the phone this morning and uh, with one of the uh, uh, volunteers from the Charleston Animal Society for the gala. So some of you might remember that last year I did the gala at the Gilliard Auditorium in Charleston, South Carolina, which um, the Charleston Animal Society does uh, the, um, the gala once a year as an auction. And this year, the theme is Mystical Moonlight Ball. It is a black tie event. And last year, I painted a um, Havanese dog that had been rescued and was adopted. Uh, my painting, I, I painted live at the Gale Yard in front of people and they, they bidded on the painting and uh, someone uh, won the painting of 
the little dog Kiko, which he was adorable. You can look back. I have some video from it and I have some past content. I'll probably update and post it again some point in time if you can't find it. Um, and he was the sweetest little dog. He was so cute. He did that little thing, but they shaved him because he was a mess when they got him. Because, you know, that's what the Charleston Animal Society does. They clean him up. They rescue him and clean him up. But anyway, they called me this morning because uh, I will be doing uh, a live painting demonstration there uh, this year, again, for the gala. And this year, it's not going to be a dog or a cat. It is going to be a horse. And the horse that they have asked me to paint is a, um, it's not going to be up for adoption, just so you know, but it is a um, marsh tacky, a Carolina marsh tacky, which is the South Carolina horse. Um, and last week, I, I should have looked this information up. She was telling me about it, but I should have read more about it. They um, actually awarded to um, uh, DP uh, Lowther, I think I'm if I'm not. He is the founder of the um, Carolina Marsh Tacky Association and um, they gave him a lifetime award. He passed away in 2022 so his uh, grandson had received the award, award for him and so they wanted uh, me to paint uh, the Carolina Marsh Tacky horse for the event this year and so I'm excited about that because I love painting horses. I just don't get a big request for them. Um, a request dream for them. Ah, my pun. I'm sorry, that was stupid. Anyway, <clears throat> so I will be there on October 14th at the Gilliard Auditorium. You can go to the Charleston Animal Society uh, website to see about buying tickets um, because it is a, a black tie event in the evening um, for raising money for the organization. Anyway, I'm excited. I had a lot of fun last year. Um, it, it was it, it was really cool. So I'm looking forward to going back to it again this year and with a different theme. So um, let's see. Oh, one more thing. Um, no, two more things. Let's <laughs> see scattered brain okay then October 28th don't want to forget that so October 28th October is always a really busy month for me um, but October 28th is the Dogtoberfest at um, Freshfields Village at Kiowa so come down and join me I will be a painting live there and I will be taking orders custom uh, uh, commissions um, and I always meet a lot of interesting people and interesting dogs, which I enjoy. I get to see lots of really cool breeds and stuff like that down there and just lots of personalities and stuff. But please come down there and see me. So again, that's um, Saturday, October 28th. It is uh, from 1 to 5 um, or 11 to 5. 11 to 5. I apologize. 11 to 5. I believe. Well, I have to be there at 11. So if you come and I'm not quite set up yet, you'll, it's okay. Just come. I'll be there. Anyway, um, it, yeah, come down. There's a lot of other vendors that are there, but it's all it all has to do with dogs. So there's going to be, a, you know, I didn't look at this year's events, but I've done it the last few years, and there's always a dog show and costume contest and all that good stuff. So anyway, come down. Uh, if, if for nothing else, if you've never been to Kiowa Island and to Freshfields Village, it is beautiful down there. It's one of my favorite beaches is at Kiowa and um, Freshfields Village is just a really quaint little area just to come and hang out and there's some great restaurants down there and just some really nice things. So if you've never been, it's, it's a great time to come and the weather is always great in October unless there's a hurricane. I digress. Um, one more thing. I have been another slacker. Shipping, okay, so you know my weaknesses. Packaging and shipping. <laughs> Unless it's a gift that has to be there for a special occasion, you know, but packaging and shipping, you know, I already said that. The other thing is 
I have been promising newsletters and I am so bad about that. I'm an artist, I paint, I don't write. I mean, I can write, everybody can write, you know, but everybody's not good at writing and I'm not saying that I'm good at writing. So most of my newsletters are going to be packed full of photos rather than a lot of words. Um, I can speak words, but writing them is just, I don't know. I did well in school in that. It's just, I'm not in school anymore, so. Anyway, I am uh, putting together my newsletter and trying to get more focused on building my email and doing my newsletters and things like that. So if you are already signed up for my newsletter, expect to get some now. I apologize for you not receiving them. Maybe you're happy that you haven't. Maybe you don't like newsletters. Maybe you accidentally signed up for my newsletter and you really don't want me to write newsletters to you, but I only plan on doing them once a month because personally, I can't stand, even if I love the person, three or four emails a day from the same person is a little overload for me because I get so many emails already. So even if I want to hear from somebody, I just don't have time to sit and read and read and read like that um, because my eyes are usually on a canvas, not reading. I do audio stuff while I'm painting, so it's kind of hard for me with that. Anyway, um, so my emails or my newsletters are really going to be a once a month thing. And I want to create good content. I don't want to just send fluff. So I'm going to focus on that. If you have not signed up for emails, um, you can do that on my website. Uh, I do have a way to collect emails from my newsletter on my website. Um, but this afternoon I'm going to uh, make sure it's in my bio when I get off of here. I'll make sure that there's a link in my bio too so that you'll be able to re uh, sign up for them if you'd like. And I think that's it. So, yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. I have work to do, so you probably do too. Thank you for joining me. It's a Monday, it's crazy, but I am happy and I can see and I'm done with the mural and I'm Yay. So I'm getting ready to go create now. So I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.